Which bike today, guys? The OG or the new one? I like this seat, very comfy, but I think I need the range today. What? 63 volts? Ah. Oh. Okay, other bike. That's a buzzkill. I guess this is the advantage of having more than one bike. Okay guys, so welcome back to I guess what's becoming your number one spot for the latest and greatest e-bike related news. Today's topic is going to be quite invigorating. In fact, it's actually going to be a two for one special because while I was researching this topic, I came across some new groundbreaking news from Bethang. Yes, that company. So they're coming out with a brand new line of components Ugh. that is radically different than what we're used to from this company. I mean, one of them, we're talking 60 kilowatts of power. So more on that later on the video. But first, I want to cover the main topic, which is another brand new bike that has caught my attention lately. Okay, so this bike is from, how do you pronounce it, Calibri? It's a startup. The bike isn't for sale quite yet. You can pre-order it. And just taking a look at the bike at first glance, it looks like a, a standard moped style e-bike it has a pretty powerful direct drive hub motor it is three kilowatts nominal peak of 16 kilowatts quite a bit of power they took a slightly different approach with the battery it's modular so it's actually three separate packs i'm not sure if they're all sold together or if it comes with one and you can upgrade to the other two packs but on the website each battery pack has a range of 40 miles. So altogether, we're talking, I guess, ideally 120 miles of range. And being that the battery is modular, you can be charging one using the other. And that's a pretty unique value proposition. I like that battery approach. Oh gosh, I'm not familiar with the range with this bike. It's a small battery, 12.8 amp hours. It definitely wasn't charged to 100%. And I am slightly struggling up this hill. Let's go this way, more downhill. Now going back and actually looking at the bike, at the design and the direction they decided to go in, it's a standard moped bike. Uh, it's reminiscent of the Onyx, right? That class of bike. And with 3000 watts nominal, 16,000 peak, it's also uh, within that range. The top speed is rated at 60 miles per hour. Although I didn't see a, a voltage for the bike. I'm going to assume it's between 60 and 72 volts. For a speed of 60 miles an hour, it probably has to be a, a 72 volt battery. The frame is also full suspension, as you would expect in this class. But the thing that's unique about this bike, the whole reason why I'm talking about it is... This is a folding bike. Yeah, this moped bike that goes 60 miles an hour has a peak power of 16 kilowatts folds. Now, of course, folding bikes aren't a new thing. My other bike that I was supposed to be riding folds in half. Lots of uh, electric XP bikes, they all fold in half. But I've never seen a bike like this have a folding ability. It does seem a little bit more convoluted. As far as I can tell, you have to lift up the seat, disconnect the rear suspension, and then the swing arm can fold kind of underneath the bike. So kind of an awkward mechanism, but if you need it, it does it. And what is this? I've never gone this way before. Um, looks like a dead end. Oh, I see. The trail continues. Uh, uh. Oh gosh, what am I doing? I have news to talk about. Yeah, so that's the M22. Uh, it's a moped, powerful, folds in half. Oh, and the price tag. 
Uh, the price tag is also uh, another great selling point in this bike. Do keep in mind, it's uh, pre-order, so this might be a uh, special pricing, but it's only $2,799. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that's for just one battery pack. Okay, this is getting a little bit too extreme. Uh, okay, the fender does not work well on this bike. But even so, with just one battery pack, that's a claimed range of 40 miles. Not terrible. You still have that peak power of 16 kilowatts. It's a moped style design, full suspension, very Onyx-esque in that way. It has a folding functionality, all for $2,799. That is compelling, and that is why I had to bring this bike to the attention of my audience. I hope you guys appreciate all the hard work that I do. There is one small caveat. I think this company is uh, European. Oh, nice. So there's a chance that it might not be for sale in the U.S. I'm not sure. I don't know this for a fact, but you would want to uh, double check that before placing a pre-order. Okay, but now the more uh, juicy news here. While I was researching this bike, there was breaking news of a brand new entire division lineup of products from Bafang. Of course, you guys know Bafang. They make the most popular e-bike hub motors. They also have the mid-drive BPS HD, right? I think you guys are all familiar with Bafang as a company. But they just launched a new brand called TND, and they make drivetrains for e-motorcycles. So a completely different power range meant for enthusiasts. Yeah, so one of these drive systems, for example, is called the Forest. It's designed for city commuting has 240 newt meters of torque, a top speed of 50 miles an hour, and it uses a 72 volt, 50 amp hour battery. And this is actually one of the weaker uh, options. Now, because this is breaking news and I'm just so quick to cover it, there's not that much uh, information out there on these products yet. But from what I can tell, it's pretty similar to those Electric & Co kits that you can use to convert uh, a gas bike to electric. And I've actually seen comments before on my channel, people saying that they do conversions like this. They take at least a, a bare bones frame, maybe it was a gas bike in a previous life, and then they convert it to electric. I've never done this myself. It does seem very interesting, and maybe this is the, the direction the market is going. Maybe instead of buying uh, mountain bikes and putting hub motors on them, we're all going to be buying bare bones motorcycle frames from China and converting them to electric motorcycles. Now here's uh, one of the limited images we have of one of these drivetrains. They're all pretty similar. Their specs differ, right? The, the battery size, the, the kilowatt rating. But at its core, they all have this motor, controller, and a battery. And I don't know about you guys, but this seems to be a perfect fit for a Suron. I'm not saying it fits, it doesn't say it officially on the website, but it seems to me that at least one of these new drive systems could be a competitor to uh, like the KO systems. So that could be another potential use case for some of these Bafang drive systems. And that would be pretty awesome, seeing uh, Surons riding around with Bafang controllers and motors could be a potential game changer. Unfortunately, I haven't seen any uh, news on price yet. But Bafang is known for having quality, affordable parts. So I do have confidence that at least the entry level of these drive systems should be semi-affordable or at least comparable to other options in the market like ASI and the KO systems. Yep, so that's the latest news in the electric bike space, keeping you guys up to date. I'll leave all relative uh, links down below if you guys want to explore any of these topics further. I deeply hope you guys enjoyed the content. If you did, a like, a subscribe, deeply appreciate it. It helps to grow the channel, spread the content on the YouTubes. And with all that said, I'll catch you guys in the next one.